welcome today. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to just quickly lead Brian and uh, Carol into worship. So why don't you just go and uh, get get behind me and get ready? Um, I'm going to read you a, a psalm, um, which I felt was um, just something that came to me um, as I was thinking about this. And uh, Psalm 122, um, and it's, it's one of the psalms that, that is called a psalm of ascent. And um, I think that it's a lovely picture because psalm, a psalm of ascent is a psalm that the pilgrims used to sing when they were going up to Jerusalem um, to celebrate um, national festivals. And it's literally an ascent because the, the, pilgrim, the pilgrim road, the main pilgrim road went from Jericho up a mountain pass and up into the mountains to Jerusalem and the final day of the pilgrimage was um, was an ascent believe it or not of about um, Scarfell Pike from sea level so if any of you have climbed England's highest mountain that was about that was about the ascent that they had to do to get up to Jerusalem so it was a physical act they had to choose to lift up their eyes to choose to go up to the Lord. Um, and you know, that's what we do, isn't it? When we come uh, today and each time we come to the Lord, we choose with a physical act to lift up our eyes, to get ourselves going and to go up where he is, mm. not to stay in the valley. And Jer Amen. Jericho is actually one of the lowest cities in the world. It's actually below sea level. So you go from not even the valley, you go from a really low place to the really high place. And that is a picture of worship, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's we, we choose to go up to we where he is. Amen. So Psalm 122. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up tribes of the Lord to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. Mm -hmm. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeah. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. So it says, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And, and it's, you know, we, we go together, don't we? We get invited. There's a picture of pilgrims gathering together you you know a friend invites you and you go up as a family unit and you go together um and it says i rejoiced as well and and um maybe sometimes we're not rejoicing when we start when we make that journey maybe we're in a place where well we're just we're dealing with difficult situations we our starting place is is the place where um you know there's life and there's tough stuff going on but I find, and I don't know about you, it's when I, it's often after I make the choice to go up that I find myself rejoicing. So when it says I rejoiced, don't assume that means the prerequisite to go up is I'm feeling great, you know, I'm rejoicing this morning. It's actually a decision. And the result of that decision is as you engage with, with that process of, of going up and being in God's presence, you find your heart rejoicing. Um, and as you do that, you find yourself then standing, as it says, in the, in the gates of Jerusalem. It says, our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. And uh, I was just picturing that moment for a pilgrim, you know, after that big ascent, standing in the great gates of the city of God. And I was thinking, what, what do the gates of the new Jerusalem look like? And, and when, I, when I had a flick through Revelation, I was actually astounded what, what it said. Because it says in um, Revelation 21.21 21, 21, mm -hmm. that um, each of the 12 gates, and there are 12 gates, are 12 pearls. Mm -hmm. 
and each gate is made of a single pearl. Yeah. And can you picture that? Mm -hmm. The gate, the great gate of the city of the New Jerusalem is made of a single pearl. And, and you know, surely that must be a pearl of great price, yes. wasn't it? Price. And um, so isn't that amazing imagery that we, we go up and we enter the city of God through a pearl of great price. Um, and of course, Jesus described himself as a gate, didn't he, as well? So, so we enter, don't we, today? We enter the city of our God after yes. having made that decision through the pearl of great price, and entering into that place where there is awe as we enter in towards the place that, where there are thrones set for judgment, where the throne of the king is. And that's what worship is. That's what we do whenever we engage with God. We, we enter through the pearl of great price. So I will hand over to Brian and to Carol, and uh, that's where we can go. Oh, we worship you, Father God. We give you glory in this house. We thank you, Lord, that we can go up. We can go to that place where you're calling us to. Lord, as we worship, there are many things that are on our hearts and in our minds. But Lord, we turn our gaze to you because you are greater than anything and everything. Oh, Lord God, and even just your very name. When we call your name, Lord, the atmosphere has to change. We just give you glory this morning. Let's just stand together and, and, and give the Lord our worship and praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we just give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to you, Jesus. You're here with the grace of the Savior. With the heart of the Father, you're all we need. And you're here with the hands of the healer, with the power of your spirit, you're all we need. At the mention of your name, every chain will break. I know everything will change. Jesus, just the whisper of your name will silence wind and waves at the mention of your name Jesus you're here yes. you're the provider thank you Lord yes. all I've ever needed Jesus you supply oh we praise you Lord and you're here with wonder working power Jesus Everything you breathe on Coming back to life At the mention of your name Every chain will break I know everything will change Jesus Just the wisdom of your name will silence wind and waves at the mention of your name Ooh. you are my strength you are my anchor and you never fail you are my hope you will deliver Emmanuel, you are my strength, you are my anchor, and you never fail. You are my hope, 
of your name every chain will break I know everything will change yes Lord Jesus just the whisper of your name will silence wind and waves at the mention of your name Just the mention oh, 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 just the whisper oh, 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 Jesus, you are just the breath away, Jesus, you are just the breath away. of your name we lift you up this morning Lord oh at the mention of your name Jesus Do verse two again, please, Jesus you're here my provider you're here you're the provider this morning we are declaring gospel truth you're here you're the provider all not some but all i've ever needed jesus you supply and whether it's to be able to speak to somebody about the lord or whether it's to be able to have your food in your house it says he's the provider this morning and he supplies and he is here this morning with wonder working power and everything that he's breathing on some of us have got dead situations in our church there is a dead situation that we need to ask God to breathe on let this church come back to life breathe on and come back to life so that we can minister as the Lord is calling us as he's put us in this place let's sing this song you're here you're the provider thank you Jesus you're here you're the provider all i've ever needed jesus you supply oh you do and you're here with wonder working power everything you breathe on it's coming back to life everything you breathe on is coming back to life everything everything you breathe on it's coming back to life you're here you're the provider oh jesus all we've ever needed jesus you supply, you supply, Lord, and you're here with your wonder-working power. Everything you breathe on is coming back to life. At the mention, at the mention of your name, every chain will break. I know everything will change Jesus just the whisper of your name will silence wind and waves at the mention of your name Jesus at the mention at the mention of your name Jesus just the mention of your name 
Jesus, 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 at the mention of your name, Jesus. Oh, we enthrone you this morning, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Let Shadamayoko just call his name Jesus. 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 Let's audibly call his name this morning. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh Jesus, 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 oh Jesus, in this atmosphere, Jesus, we breathe your name in this atmosphere, Jesus, and we enthrone you this morning, hallelujah, Jesus, we enthrone you, Jesus. We enthrone you. We proclaim you. We proclaim you are King. Standing here in the midst of us. Hallelujah. We raise you up with our praise. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, yes. and take your sword of hope. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, we enthrone you. Yes, we do. We proclaim you are king, no other king like you. Standing here in the midst of us. We raise you up with our praise. Ooh, and as we worship, build your throne. Ooh, and as we worship, build your throne, Jesus. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Jesus, we enthrone you. Jesus, we enthrone you this morning, Lord. And we proclaim that you are king. You are our king of kings. Standing here in the midst of us. Oh, yes, Lord. We raise you up with our praise. And as we worship, build your throne. Build it, Lord. And as we worship, build your throne, establish your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Come, Lord. Oh, and as we worship, build. Throne. And as we worship, build your throne, oh Lord. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, 
and take your place. Oh, we invite you to come, Jesus, and take your place. The Spirit and the Bride say, come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. I just want to read Isaiah 61. Um, and just as we've kind of been on that journey of worship this morning, just keeping that attitude of worship. And let's go to Isaiah 60, shall we, actually? Just um, read some of these, just in the atmosphere of, of where we are, declaration of Scripture. Um, because one thing we do need to realize is that God doesn't categorize us into two hymns, two words, three points, and a poem, and then home um, to roast beef or Yorkshire pudding. Um, and he doesn't, there isn't certain categorization where there's worship, then there's prayer, and then the word, and then there's a tithe and offering, or then there's fellowship. Actually, all of it is worship to God, and all of it can unlock our destiny in our lives. Um, as long as we come with that attitude of realizing that it's his word that brings adoration to the king as well. It's our prayers that bring adoration. Uh, it's a declaration that can bring adoration. It's worship that can bring declaration and adoration to the king. And I think sometimes that over time with worship, we've missed the combination and intertwine aspect of scripture. Now, okay, you can say, yeah, but we sing scripture. Well, do we? Because a lot of modern songs don't even sing scripture. Um, a lot of it doesn't even bring you into a place of adoration to a king. Um, so actually, in some ways, what we've done is, in some ways also, we've said, well, I'll sing these songs or I'll listen to these songs, but I won't actually read scripture. And sometimes we have those, I've been in churches where uh, ministering, where people turn just, they don't come for the worship. So they miss about the first 40 minutes and just come for the word. So interesting. And I've also seen it where people come for the word and leave for the word, uh, for the worship and leave for the word. And I've also seen it where worship teams leave when the word is being declared. And to me, there's such a, it's like categorization. I want this slice of the pizza, but not that slice. I don't want the prophetic, but I want the aspect of the apostolic, or I want the declaration of the word, but I don't want the reality of the word. And I think we need to get that back in line with where we are on the journey, especially in the world we're in. I think we just ham sandwich it and blow in and blow out and come in too often and too quick, really. And I think, especially around us, people are just wanting time with you. They want to speak to you one on one. They want that time of just being able to have a coffee or a chat with you or some aspect of just pulling alongside them. How often is it you go through Morrison's and you get a slight conversation or somebody goes, I ain't got time or they're so busy look, wanting, they might want something off the top shelf. And not that there are too many people ask me to get stuff off the top shelf, but sometimes I do get asked um, because I can reach if I get up a little bit higher. But then they want to move on. They don't, there's not the dialogue of uh, interaction. And actually, if we're like that and we own up to that, because I can be like that sometimes, he's very busy, very kind of, you know, in and out. Sometimes we can be like that with God, if we're really honest. We can kind of sandwich him into our portion of the day, or it can be a, a duty or religious way. And sometimes at the pureness of heart, even that aspect, we can do things with pureness of heart, but still we're leaving him outside. And what did they do with the uh, Ark of the Covenant? They left it out in the shed, didn't they? Um, they didn't want to bring it into their lives or into their households or into their meeting place. And I think it's important as we sang this morning, you know, show me your glory. You talk about holiness. And I think aspects of that is sometimes is just letting go of things so that we can see, keep focused on the aspect of what God has called us to. Because, you know, sometimes we can become weighed and lapped down and the weight of the world can be upon us, but not the weight of his glory. Maybe the calling, the anointing, the vision, the destiny, assignments that he's called us to. Maybe we become weighed down with the left and the right. That actually it's not so much as the aspect of we think holiness as being purer than now, or holier than now. and all. It's actually the fact of in many ways is looking at the purity and holiness of Christ. Entering his gates with rejoicing. Realising that actually it's about rented hearts. Uh, not so much rented garments. But it's about the heart being rented. And it's about the actual foreskins of the heart being rented and led open towards God. So there's a purity of heart. So that the things that we are seeking in his kingdom is his heaven is going to come to earth as his will will be done. There's a purity of seeking that. 
that we're not going to get it right all the time. It's not about hitting all the F sharps and B minors and being able to quote scripture and shakarabakuti. It's actually being real in desperate situations and scenarios and allowing things around us to drop off. You know, I was, you know, one of the things that's really been stirring me over recent weeks is the, um, the outpouring um, at the top end of a kind of Scotland and um, the Outer Hebridean revival. And you know, you had this one lady that was blind and you've got a sister in their 80s that had been praying all these years. And actually there was marks in the floor where they'd been praying on the knees and walking. And there's aspect of one of them's blind, one of them's bent over double, and yet they see something that naturally could not be seen. There's something, but it took them a long time of praying and worshiping and seeking God, maybe alone, where others would have discarded them, when others would have undermined them, when others were going, well, what kind of situation they find themselves in, but yet they'd stripped themselves of the weight of the world and they'd given them size, size to God so that the weight of his glory and presence, you know, like we feel this morning, it, we are, the Holy Spirit is not a feeling, he's not a hit, he's not a her, it's not a phenomenon, it's a person, it's Jesus, he lives with us. But there are those times when you feel him present with you, on you. Like this morning, there's a, the presence of God is with us and been on us and we've been singing that. And Isaiah 60, which is an interesting declaration, he says, this is kind of talking to, to, to kind of the, the, the glory of Zion and those that had been waylaid and kind of the aspect of needing redemption, the aspect of needing to confess things. Israel had been through this whole aspect of despair and agony and worry. And here he goes, and it's saying, Arise and shine, for their light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord, notice this, the Lord shall rise upon you, and his glory shall come upon you. And we've been singing about that this morning. And he says, Arise and shine, for thy light has come. I believe we're in a day right now where actually we do need to rise. You know, um, we, 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 we aspect of um, in the darkness and in the shadows, you might be the only light that will shine in circumstances and situations. Um, we might be the only Jesus that is in our workplace or with our neighbours or in our families. We might be the only hope in our community. There might be people that will speak to us, they won't speak to anybody else. And even the fact of you, you know, offering them a coffee or even offering them a sandwich or even being in a workplace and doing something a little bit of an extra mile, that is sometimes when all hell is breaking loose in their life and everything is dark, that is the arising and the shining of God upon us. So when we sing this, we realise that we don't have to hide behind a veil any longer. In fact, even though Moses had to have the hand over his face, in the New Testament we find that the veil was torn in two. And notice it was when it came down from top to bottom and it brought heaven down to earth so that we no longer have to hide behind a veil. We no longer have to hide behind shame or guilt. We no longer have to hide behind sin because when Jesus Christ came, it says the Bible says he tore down the wall of separation, the veil of sin, so that we can have access to the throne room of grace. The Bible says in every hour of need, we can come boldly to the throne room of grace. And that means we can come whether we feel in glory or we feel out of glory. Whether we feel ashamed or we feel that we're shameful, whether we feel that we have no shame. Whether we feel guilty or we feel uh, vindicated. Whether we feel that we have the way to the world or the way to the glory, we can come. And so here he's saying the, right, the aspect of arising. And I believe more than ever that the church right now is in an arising season. I believe more than ever that there is darkness upon the earth and gross darkness upon the people. It's getting darker. We've been reading in 2 uh, Timothy for a number of weeks about perilous times and difficult times that are here with us. They're not coming, they're already here. They're going to get worse. In some areas of the worst, they are even worse. So just a bit slower in creeping up into our Western world and Western society. But you see what's going on. Fires in Ireland, a fire in Middle of Leeds last night. Just these random things from somewhere, diseases. Um, that are just randomly coming out of, of places, things like scarlet fever and, and various other uh, things that haven't been around for quite a number of years, all of a sudden are becoming around once again because the enemy, Lucifer, he wants to weigh us down, he wants to trap us down from the calling and the anointing and the understanding of destiny and assignment that we have individually, but also that we have as a family. And that we have as corporate the body of Christ globally. The enemy wants to weigh us down. They're the weight sometimes of sin. 
the fears, the aspect of woe is me, the aspect of we, 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 we can't make it through till the end, the aspect of we have too much of our own baggage and our own weight that we can't feel the weight of his glory. Things may seem dead. And you no, know, it's interesting um, because we've been doing the um, unanswered prayer course on Wednesdays. And um, this week they were talking about Monday, Thursday and the anguish that Jesus went through. And we have got it on this Wednesday again, 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. And it's very interesting. It's not doubting the fact of who God is, but it's in the doubting, realizing that God comes through and comes strong. And it's, you know, this week the, the, the story uh, was a, an interesting story. But um, the aspect was, I was just um, speaking to somebody a day before that, and they were, we were kind of talking about the beauty for ashes. And I didn't realize that in that week, or this week, they talked from some of um, the aspect of God giving us beauty for ashes in that. And it's interesting because there's a place in, in Italy, I think it's um, pa Pamela or something like that, they call it. And um, there was this kind of eruption. And um, what happened is this eruption happened, all these bombings came in and various things happened. And the ash and the lava, but more the ash of the destruction of fire that came upon the place rested upon people. And there were people for years when they went back and surveyed the whole area and did some kind of... Um, aspect of trying to figure out what's going on there were people that were frozen covered in ash they were dead there were houses there were complete structures that years and years later were still led in the bed people there were people walking there were people eating just sat and the ash had come upon them but what eventually happened is over time the ash began to dissolve and the ash eventually began to bring beauty for what looked dark and what looked bleak uh, it's interesting, there's Death Valley that um, is recorded as well in history. And for years, that whole valley was just totally bleak. They had no rain. All it had was sun for absolute years. There was nothing that would fertilize or allow the ground to be able to be fruitful and give birth to anything. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in this dead land, all of a sudden, the rain began to fall. And now, for years, rain has fallen at many times, and there are beautiful flowers. There is some great stuff that has grown in Death Valley. You know, in Australia, for a number of years, those fires that were going on and on and on and on and on for years, they said they'd never be able to build anything because the ground was so parched and so dead. And then all of a sudden, rain waters came. And after a short period of time, with that rain that was falling, the dew and the rain of the ground, eventually what was dead and what seemed dead began to come alive. And you know, we read here, it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You see, I really want to encourage us that what we feel is dead can actually become alive. What we feel is lost can actually be brought back to us. You know, we, we talk, don't we, about the aspect of Noah's Ark. And actually, really, like today, everybody would mock us if we talked about God restoring his kingdom upon the earth. We talked about an, an army being uh, kind of marching through our land. We talk about a radiant men and women, a people that see the glory of God. The world will laugh, the world will mock. But yet we know that the promise of God here as he said in, in, in uh, Israel's day and he's saying to us today in the 21st century, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee and the glory shall be seen upon you and the Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your shining. Again, here's this word here. It says, lift up your eyes from all about you. And we read in the psalm this morning. We read in the psalm last week. We said about lifting up our eyes and looking up. Not being navel gazers. Not being quasimodos. Looking around and thinking, woe is me. But actually looking up. And waiting for the redemption of Christ that is drawing nigh. That we realize that there is a, a king who is going to rule and going to reign. The Bible says one will be in a bed and two will be in a bed. One will be taken, one will be left. The Bible says he's going to come as a thief in the night. The Bible says he's going to come with a pure and radiant bride. The Bible says that we're going to rule and reign with him. The Bible also says, unfortunately, he's going to be wailing a gnashing of teeth for those that will be left behind. But here he's saying, and he said, lift up your eyes from about you. 
You see, the many things that are going on around us, BBC News, ITV News, Sky News, all manner of different news, instead of reading the good news and hearing the good news of what Jesus is saying to us, that he's a king's and redeemer, that he's brought us into a place of redemption and that there is a marriage feast of the lamb that we have been invited to. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Are you hearing the invitation this morning of the spirit and the bride that says, come. And so he's saying, arise and shine for your light has come, but lift up your eyes around you and see. They gather themselves together. They come to you. The sons shall come from afar and daughters from afar off and shall be nursed at thy side. You know what I think is interesting about that verse four this morning is that Jesus said to them when they had flocks of people around them and all the children, you know, he says this, Jill, he says, suffer those little children. They wanted to get rid of the children. Oh, they're too noisy. Oh, they're, you know, they're, they're, oh, aren't they a bit of a, they're a bit of a bug, aren't they? Aren't they a bit of a, you know, if you just get them out of the way, and send them off to grandmas or granddads and aunties and uncles. If we could just keep them quiet, give them some McDonald's and some sweets. But they weren't even saying that to them. What they were saying is, get the children away. But actually, the Bible clearly states to Denver Thompson, to me, he said, Denver, unless you come as a child, then you can't inherit the kingdom of God. And so I understand there's purity in growing up in that, in Christ and understanding. But actually, if we can't come simply as a child, and you know, I mean, think about what a child you know, what, what these young children expect, even at 18, 19, even at 30 odd sometimes, when they come to your house as mum and dad, they still want this food. You know, they still want a good cup of tea and a coffee. They want to sit down, they want to spend time with you. They want you to provide for them. They do, this is what the nature of children are. And if we're honest, we'd love that. There's nothing better than going out for a meal with somebody or having somebody invite you around to the house and being waited on. There's something quite nice about that because that is what God says to us, come to us as children. You know these children, they don't carry any weight. Children don't have to pay the bills, do they? They're not worried about the gas and the electric. They're just like, why is it so cold in here? Put the heating on. They're not concerned about the washing machine being on seven times a day. You know, they're not concerned about the aspect of what we're going to eat tomorrow for breakfast, dinner and tea. You know, when we categorise and we know what we're going to have, a, you know, fish and chip Friday, not for me, but sometimes you get or your McDonald's Friday or you get certain things of the week. And they, they like a certain type of food. They've got a certain palate. They like a certain sweets. They like a certain type of hot chocolate. Can't be just any hot chocolate nowadays. It's got to be a flavourable hot chocolate. And all of a sudden, there's these little categories. But actually, there's no weight of the world on them. You know, it's interesting. I take, you take your children to school and they just run off. They run into the teacher. They run to the other, the other children around them. There's a freedom. They just go. But in church, we don't seem to do that. We have weights on us. We sit in one certain seat or we categorize it to a certain denomination to a certain creed certain type but they don't have a weight on them and they're focused in their journey they're, when they're young they tell you what they want to be they tell you what they want to do and then what happens is nine times out of ten some of these people will do but we've got to also realize that the weight of the world as they grow the world's weight tries to weigh them down but then they can't carry the glory at times they can't walk in the call, they can't walk in their anointing, they can't walk in the purpose. And their destiny at times can seem murky. Sometimes there's fires, there's disasters. There's sometimes there's hurts and wounds that we all carry or we've all been through. But yet when that ash falls on us, we know as it says in Isaiah 61 that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed us to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me, this is including all of us, I'm not just talking about Denver Thompson, this is all of us this morning, find your name in the Bible. He says, he, and he has um, called all of us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prisons to them who are bound. You've heard it this morning about prison cells being open. We talked about it last week, about prison cells and chains being open. We talked about keys to locks being open this morning. Proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance for our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them the mount of in Zion, to mourn in Zion, to give unto them, listen to this, beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. It's interesting that what the enemy meant for harm, God wants to turn around and bring beauty out of it. You see, this is not a codependency. 
This is not the fact of I've got to be in one place with one individual person, codependency on drink, codependency on a certain aspect of individual or relationship. This is not a codependency with Christ. The Bible says that you're co-seated with him. You're co-heirs with him. The Bible says that you were co-crucified with him. And just incidentally, you know, he didn't die for you. He died as you. Quite a big difference. Because if it had died for you, well, for Denver Thompson, <laughs> he'd have to keep dying for me every single day of the week. <laughs> but thankfully, he died as me. So actually, in Christ, I'm dead. Past tense. But in present tense, I'm alive with him. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance for our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Notice this, the oil of joy for mourning. You see, it's interesting about oil. Um, recently, uh, I've kind of gone back into looking into the aspect of oil. When I was mechanicking, and I mechanic for a number of years... What was very interesting is there was different elements of oil. There are different temperatures that the oil can go to. You can't put engine oil in a gearbox. And you can't put engine oil or gearbox oil in power steering oil. So there are different categories of oil. Now what will happen is when they find oil, instantly this oil will uh, permeate up out of the ground. When they, when they find oil and they tank into the ground for oil, it ruptures. This oil just spurses up everywhere. It just comes out of nowhere and it's black and it's thick. That oil has to be refined. That oil eventually gets refined and that's where you have cooking oil. That's where you have the aspect of, uh, of oil that will be for central heating sometimes. Like in Ireland, they, they don't run on gas, they'll run on oil. So there's certain crude types of oil. Then there's the oil of engine oil you have in your engine. Then there's, there's cooking oil that you can use for cooking. Because it can go to a certain heat. There is certain oil you have in your power steering. Then there's certain oil you have in an auto gearbox. Or even in your gearbox, even though you still change gears and it might be a clutch. And you might have a, a, a kind of um, aspect of an old school where you've got like a, a cable that's adjusting. You still have oil because there are cogs inside the gearbox. But it's interesting because oil smells... There is something about oil that smells. And here he's saying, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. You see, the oil gives us joy. You see, this morning we should be smelling of oil. There should be a smell on us. You see, oil also marks. Trust me, you don't go to a wedding when you've done an oil change in the oil that you've used, in the overalls. You don't go for out for a meal either. And the other thing you can't do, which I probably did too many times, uh, you shouldn't be sitting on the sofa at home either, having had oil on your clothes. Because the other thing it does is marks. It marks us. And it marks carpets as well. So when I would come home, and I still lived at home at that point, uh, and um, my parents were still there, uh, my mum would say, right, you take your toenail boots off at the door, outside, before you even come in. Well, if it was a wet and a rainy day, or if, I, if my mum wasn't around, and my dad wasn't there, and I was hungry, and I didn't want to do that, and I wanted to, be dis I wanted to just eat my sandwich, all of a sudden, I would just go in. You know what, I'll tell you what, my mum would soon know, no matter how much I tried to clean it, because she'd say, you've been in here with those boots on. You haven't left your overalls at work because there's a stain. You've marked the floor, you've marked the carpet. How many of us can say that we've been marked by God this morning? Because when you've been marked with the oil, it's an oil of joy. Even in our suffering, even in our weariness, even in the time of mourning, which I don't disregard. The Bible says there are times and there are seasons when we lose things. There are things that we hurt through. There can be scars. Jesus has scars even today. He's got the areas where the, the, the nails were pierced him. There's nothing wrong with piercings. There's nothing wrong with the aspect of Christ and the scars on the journey of life. It shows that we've been through some battles and we've got some victories so that we can move on to the next victory. Amen. But here he says, the joy of the Lord, the oil for joy is for mourning, and the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, planting of the Lord, that they might be glorified. Does it mean worldly glorification? Jill was saying this morning about people wanting that worldly glorification, trying to fit in. Maybe you feel like you fit out. It's not about that. This is the oil of joy. And he gives us joy in this season. There should be real joy. 
Seriously, there should be real joy. You know, now we have to be understanding of our times and seasons that we're in. 190% we need to understand that. I'm not saying lock yourself in a cupboard. I'm not saying, you know, be a Mormon or a Norman and just go away into a cave. But you may be in a cave of a Dullum. But what I'm saying is, don't become weighed down by the things of the world. Because if there's no oil, if there's an understanding where there's no authority, if there is no praise for the garment of weariness, then unfortunately we cannot progress in what God is calling us to. We need progression on that journey. We need to be able to carry the things of God so we strip off the things of the world. The stripping of the things of the world is vitally important so that we can carry the weight of his glory. So that we can arise, that we can shine, that we can be the hands and we can be the feet of Christ in our community and our society around us. Bring those good tidings to Christ. But what oil are we carrying? Because we can be marked by the oil of the world. We can be marked by the disappointment. We can have a smell of the world upon us. And again in Corinthians it says you either give off the form of death or you give off the form of life. You see, what kind of mark are we leaving? See, when you've been marked by the oil, then you leave the mark of the kingdom. And it's that mark of the oil of the anointing. The Bible says it breaks the yoke of bondage. It opens prison doors so that the prisoners can be set free. It's the oil of the anointing that delivers and casts out devils. It's the oil of the anointing that brings healing in its wings. It's through the oil of the anointing that we can receive comfort for areas of mourning. It's the oil of the anointing that can bring counsel where we need counsel. It is the oil of the anointing that can bring peace in the midst of chaos all around us. It is the oil of the anointing that distinguishes the men from the boys, if you like, and the world from the church. Because there is a distinctness of understanding that it is the oil of the anointing that breaks the yoke. In fact, we know that Jesus Christ, you know, it's not his first and surname, first and last name. No, we know that Jesus is his name, Christ is his title, and it says the anointed one. So we haven't received Mohammed because there's no anointing. We haven't received Harry Krishna because there's no anointing. We haven't received Joseph Smith or Joseph Prince because there is no anointing. But we've received Jesus the Christ. That's why you cast out devils in Jesus Christ's name. That's why we heal the sick in Jesus Christ's name. That's why we can decree and declare over atmospheres in Jesus Christ's name that there is a way that seems narrow or seems right to the world, but actually in the kingdom is narrow. So that the weight of the world would drop off us. So that we can receive and carry the oil of the anointing. To come just as children with no baggage, no expectations, no limits. A child doesn't limit itself. They don't even know what time of day it is. It can be 11 o'clock at night, they're still de defiant. I'm not tired, I'm not going to bed. And all of a sudden they cake out like that and they're fast asleep. You can't wake them up for the next 12 hours or sometimes it can be you know, 11 p.m. at night and it can be 11 a.m. in the morning before they wake. Depends if it's a teenager or uh, kind of what kind of um, journey they're on. But it's interesting that we receive the oil of the anointing this morning. So we thank you, Lord, for your oil this morning. We thank you for the worship and adoration to you. We thank you. Lord, that we don't come for performance or pageantry. We thank you for the words that you've released over our lives this morning. Lord, pick the lock in my life, mentally, spiritually, physically, relationally, intellectually. Lord, whatever aspect it is, carry on picking the locks. Lord, carry on defining, fine tuning. Lord, let me have the right oil. Let me have the right garments to praise you. Lord, let us not become weary in doing good as a church. And Lord, we do stand in the gap this morning. Lord, for the numerous people, Lord, at New Life Community Church that have got different things, Lord, whether it's runs, whether it's sickness and being sick, whatever bugs it is that's going around, Lord, there's a number of people this morning that are not able to be here, Lord, because they've been running to and from the toilet for the last 12, 24 hours, or they've been sick, or there's shivers, and they're not feeling well. So I pray this morning, that Lord, whatever it is, Lord, whatever bug, Lord, whatever weight that's trying to wear them down, this morning, we as a family, we agree together that by your stripes, we are healed. We decree and declare mentally, spiritually, and physically 
as well this morning over any individual person. Lord, whether they're here this morning or part of the church that are not here, part of our family. And uh, Lord, if we can pray. give freely the details beyond the screen as well. We do thank you for your giving. I know many of us give. Thank you, Mary. I know many of us give uh, by standing order. Lord, for the finances this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for cash advancements, unexpected sources. Lord, of, of finances and checks in the mail. We didn't realize they're coming. And pray, Lord, for the extension of your kingdom in this community. Lord, in every area of advancement, things we expect to do in coming weeks and months and years ahead, Lord. And we thank you that, Lord, your church is advancing. That, Lord, you are the head of your church and we are just serving you. And we pray, Lord, in your most precious name, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen.